correctly. And uh, thank you, Tina, Carl and Louise and your family for that uh, really moving welcome to country. Yungu Galanyin Nalawiri, Daniyi Nanawal Daura. We are meeting together on Nanawal country and we acknowledge and pay our respects to your elders. And we pay our deep respects to your people, the Ngunnawal people, who, as you said, Tina, have walked these lands and met on these lands forever, to time beyond our imagination, to time out of mind. And I extend our respects to all your elders, past and present, to future elders, our young dancers here tonight, and to all First Australian peoples and their elders, including, of course, all of those outstanding achievers and role models today that we'll talk about in a moment. And of course, I want to acknowledge and welcome all of my parliamentary and ministerial colleagues, especially Nigel Scullion, the Minister for Indigenous Affairs, and of course, Ken Wyatt, the uh, Minister for Aged Care and Minister for Indigenous Health and, as you know, the first Indigenous Australian to be a minister in a Commonwealth government. But welcome all. Now, today is the ninth anniversary of the National Apology to the Stolen Generations. And we acknowledge today, as we did in the House earlier, the loss, the grief and the heartache past policies created for our first Australians. But despite those injustices and that trauma, you and your people have shown a courage and resilience which is extraordinary. Tonight we acknowledge the remarkable lives of so many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians who are thriving and succeeding. But of our Marilyn and Marlene were the first. Marilyn became the first Indigenous obstetrician, and their brother Kelvin, the first Indigenous surgeon in Australia. Kelvin and his wife are here with us. Another young doctor, Mika Barunga, is now the first Indigenous doctor in Derby, a town two hours out of Broome where she grew up swimming, fishing, and playing with a plastic stethoscope. We also have with us Dr. Cass Hunter, Mibu, Fisher, and Carly Noon, all work one of two new CSIRO Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander scholarships to undertake postgraduate studies in STEM subjects. Congratulations, Katie. Carly, I should say. Uh, Tanya Denny, a talented journalist and producer, now managing the national Indigenous television station that celebrates Indigenous culture, voices and storytelling, and so many others. People working, caring for country, in health, social services, education, science, technology, technology, law, the arts, politics, public service, defence and so much more. We acknowledge the strength of culture and of kinship and those strong bonds that can help shape higher expectations and better outcomes. I want to pay tribute in particular to the Indigenous women who demonstrate that strength every day the mums and the grandmas 
and the aunties and the sisters who never give up. Now we must ensure that the education system and all those in it believe in the dreams of our young people, that we support each student and lift them up and give them every opportunity to get the most out of their education. I know that you would all agree that a solid education is the surest way to get from the first Indigenous doctor to the 500th and then the 5,000th, to make sure that in years to come we're not talking about one or two hundred Indigenous lawyers or accountants, but thousands of them. So I want to thank all of the organisations, some of whom are here tonight, for their investment in the dreams of these young people. Aurora Foundation, the Australian Indigenous Mentoring Experience, Career Trackers, AFL Cape York House, and many more, too many to name. And already we can point to progress. In the seven years to 2015, the gap in year 12 attainment shrunk by close to 15 per cent. And in the decade to 2015, the number of Indigenous students enrolling in higher education nearly doubled. The higher the level of education, the smaller the gap between Indigenous Our anything is possible. Your stories are vital. Is extraordinarily diverse. cities and suburbs. Far away in the Tiwi Islands, right here in Canberra, in the centre of government, in the bush and on the coast, it encompasses extraordinary talent, vision and determination. So tonight I want to challenge all present and people right across Australia to tell your stories, to widen our lens, to focus the attention of our nation on your hard work and your achievements. We want to have a nation where our Indigenous children are limited only by their imagination. To show Indigenous children from Shepparton to the Tiwi Islands, from Redfern to Alice Springs, that they can be anything they set their mind to. That little girl can be anything she sets her mind to, Tina. That's, that's the dream. That's the goal. So that being Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander means to be successful, to achieve, to have big dreams and high hopes, and to draw strength from your identity as an Indigenous man or woman in this great land, Australia. There is a room full of role models right here. When we include the stories like those we honour tonight, we shine a light on the richness and diversity of our first Australians. And we light, you light, the way for others. So congratulations on your success, and we thank you for paving the way for so many Indigenous Australian success stories to come. So I'm now honoured to invite another great role model, another inspiration, my dear friend, the very wise Ken White, Minister for Aged Care, Minister for Indigenous Health the first Indigenous member of the House of Representatives and the first Indigenous minister in a Commonwealth government. Tina, can I thank you for your welcome to country, acknowledge your mum and dad, the Ngunnawal people, your elders past, present and those who are yet to come. I want to acknowledge all Indigenous people here today what I see is something that the Prime Minister and I talked about on a flight between Sydney and Canberra. I don't know whether he was unfortunate to sit with me or not, but we had a great conversation. And I talked to him about the stars that we have in our community who make a difference to the lives of others around them. 
that our heroes are not just on the sporting fields. They are the mums and dads who hold professional positions, who make a difference in their community and the passion that they do. But I think more importantly, Prime Minister, I want to thank you for acknowledging that faith that you have, not only in our leadership, but those who work at the community level, those who on a daily basis go out and provide the level of support and service. Even at my age, I still walk with Loa Jero Donoghue. I listen to her words of encouragement. I listen to her chastising when I need to be chastised. But more importantly, I absorb the knowledge that she imparts to enrich the work that I do here. And equally with my other colleagues, uh, the Indigenous members of this parliament. We met this morning and shared some of our thinking around the work that we have to do to influence broader Australia. And to all of the women I met today, I've worked and walked with some of you and I've enjoyed that incredible experience because we've taught each other so much. But I think more importantly is that we collectively have a lot to offer and I think of the people that helped me on my way who at times when I thought that I was failing or thought that I didn't have the confidence would put a hand on my shoulder and say, don't stop. Achieve what you're hoping to achieve. And even in my journey into politics, my year one teacher on the day that I was campaigning and on the day of the election, she came and stood at a booth, handed out how to vote cards. She taught me in 1959. And she said to me, I believed in you all of that time. I believe you will win and I believe that you will make a contribution. Those words are the words we should use with anybody that we can touch within our communities to encourage them. The strength of what we have within us is the strength that builds the next generation of young leaders. Some of us are starting to get older and tired and we need to also encourage the next three generations that come after us. Because it is that journey and that inspiration we give to our own in partnership with Australians makes the difference. And I look at Joy Savage and I see the journey that she and I had right back in the days when I first went into Aboriginal health. And we bounced off each other. We disagreed at times because she was in the Commonwealth, but that didn't deter us. We encouraged each other to retain the strength, the passion that we had, but the vision we wanted for the future of every young Indigenous Australian that was coming after us. So, Prime Minister, thank you very much, and it's great to be here.